Hi everyone. Today we're working with a boxwood. This is a legacy tree that came from the collection of one of our elders who uh, was no longer healthy enough to care for it. And uh, it looks like this was shaped kind of as a pre-bonsai. When I got it, it was not in a bonsai pot. It was in a, um, a, pl a large plastic flower pot. And I uh, transplanted it to this training pot about two years ago and just kind of let it grow. Now if you take a look, it has sort of a nice triangular bone size shape here. But the problem is that's all it has. You know, it's got these two thick trunks, but the branch structure, if you look a little bit closer, is quite disordered. For example, this looks like it would be a real nice side branch, but in reality, it issues from the base of the second trunk, then it crosses in front of that trunk, and on the really ideal front, it pokes out towards the viewer. It's what John Naka would have called an eye-poking branch. So one of the first things we have to do, much as we don't want to, and this beautiful, well-shaped branch, but it has to go, or this is never gonna be a bonsai. So we'll just take the big cutter here, and go right on in here and we'll maybe leave a little bit for some dead wood later because you can shape dead wood on these boxwoods and now you look and the front of the tree or what's eventually going to be the front is a lot more wide open now we have another eye poker up here this one's dead this live thing here might get left but we need to take this off yep that's dead so that's gone now the next question we come to when looking at this is how do we select branches for a bonsai? Now most bonsai, you're going to, well every bonsai has a first branch and with most bonsai it's going to project from roughly one third the way up the trunk. Now because this is a two trunk bonsai, the first branch is going to issue off the side of the secondary trunk, that being this here and it may be roughly a third up the secondary trunk. This appears to be collected material. It wasn't originally shaped as a bonsai. Probably was growing in a hedge somewhere, so it's not, the branches are not quite in the right places and not in order, and that kind of gives us our conundrum here is how do we establish a first branch, counterbalancing branch, a back branch, upper front branches, and so forth. If you have a large old piece of material like this, and in general it looks like it would be a great bonsai, but you come to that moment where you start going through the branches, they're not quite in the right places, and you're looking and saying, okay, now what am I going to do with this? The best thing to do is to just kind of go through it, and start cleaning it up, sort of plane out the branches and see where they really fall and then as you do that you'll gain confidence and you'll start to figure out what you want to keep and what you want to take off. So for example this branch here you've got this little crossing thing here that has to come out and it's dead and then we'll just start taking off the stuff that goes straight up and sort of get into a bonsai mode with this branch and what we'll, that will do really is we'll be able to look at it with a more critical eye without anything cluttering it and see whether it really belongs to the design and whether or not to keep it or not so we just keep going through here take off everything that's going straight up. Now if you have a juniper or something where there's a lot of growth going straight down, you'll want to take that off too. And this is part of a different branch here. Now this doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to keep this branch. I just want to see what it's going to look like if it's shaped out. Now we take a look at the tree again and we're starting to get there a little bit better. Now we got another dead one here. So let's take a look at this branch here. Now with boxwoods, wiring them is kind of dicey. You can wire the foliage when it's small and when it's thin. 
but once it gets beyond a certain thickness it gets very stiff and extremely difficult to bend. So I'll just go in here, clean out these stubs here. We took off the one major branch here that cluttered up the front. And other than that, I've just been doing little bits of cleaning here. And in the course of doing that, I actually got the vision kind of for where this tree is really going. And I started to realize that this is going to be kind of the major first branch here on this large trunk. And it's going to have to be wired a bit around towards the front here. Then we'll have this front branch that comes down to this side here. And then we'll have this one, bring that down, clean this up and bring it down, then this one, and then clean things up in the back here. And that'll kind of develop this whole side of the tree. Now remaining questions of course are with this as our first branch is, do we really need this one that goes out towards the back here? And I'm looking at that and thinking for right now I may leave it. It doesn't really contribute anything but you know I'm not really going to know for sure until I get this trunk sorted out. Now as of now with this one kind of too far back and coming towards the front we may need to put the front in here and keep this. So this isn't going yet. The next big question is what are we going to do with this and this? And I started to realize that this one here, since it's a secondary off of this one here, we're probably going to take this off, keep this little one here and this one here, and work with them. So, kind of a bold decision to be making, but we got to do something sooner or later if we want to have a bonsai. So, this is going to come off here. Now it's just a matter of getting the cutter in there making the cut. Okay, so that really cleaned things up over in that area and maybe made room for us to bring something down from above. That there's a possibility and this here's a possibility. Next thing to deal with is this guy here and we're looking at this and branches that go towards the back and kind of turn into trunks. Not really a thing so we'll get probably the big cutter here. We got some greenery around the base on this. So we'll leave that and just sort of take that off. And then we'll come in here. And we're going to leave a few leaves here so this thing doesn't die back completely. Okay, and that looks a lot cleaner from over there. Now the next concern is we've got more back branch structure in here that we need to deal with. And we took this one back a little ways earlier. We really wanted to look and see where we're going with this. Now I'm going to take a look at it from the front again. And looking at it, I really don't think it needs this one. That cleans that up. And then we're looking at this. And this may actually have a roll to play since it goes a little higher than this one here. So we'll just kind of clean this up for right now. After a lot of careful and judicious branch removal, we're very close to having the final image for this tree. There are just a few things I still want to try to do. One is, we've decided to use this structure here 
is a new apex for the secondary trunk, which means we're going to have extensive deadwood features here. And we've kept one little sprig of branch back here to kind of give some perspective here, and that'll be at the end of a live vein here. And then the other concern is this here. It's This is too high up and too far out, but it's intriguing to think about trying to save it. Is it possible to separate the live vein from the deadwood and bring it down. So we'll uh, maybe grab a trunk splitter and take a look at splitting this away and see if we can do it. The boxwood wood is very, very hard to bend and once branches get much thicker than something like this here, wiring it into shape is almost impossible. So you pretty much have to work the tree by pruning once you're dealing with thick wood and just concentrate on bending only the thinner branches. But since we have to reduce this dead wood anyway, let's get a splitter and see what we can try to do with it. Okay, this is splitting off pretty easily here. The only question is, are we going to get something bendable out of this, or are we going to give up on this and just... This is very, very dicey work here. Okay, that's too far in. We need to come out a little. It's really difficult to do this. See, this is live that far in. So let's go down a little farther. That's too stiff. That's not going to bend. It was worth a try, but it's not going to work. So we're just going to, that's going to split, so we're just going to take that off like that. And then we'll work on reducing the deadwood a little bit here to make it look a little more natural. Like something, maybe a lightning strike or something, hit it. See, this wood's really hard. It's even harder than juniper wood. Okay, let's take a look at this now. All right, we're looking at the eventual shape of the tree. This is going to get wired into position like this. And that's just about right. You want to leave it a little longer than you think you need because the dead wood doesn't grow, but the rest of the tree does. So eventually the live part's going to be a bit larger and a bit taller. And that actually looks pretty nice. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need to do is throw some wire on this. And we'll come back after that and show you what the tree's going to look like as a bonsai. This about concludes the wiring and the shaping of this boxwood. When I started with this tree, it had a nice sort of general vague bonsai shape to it and it had amazing character. I already knew that. And the trick here was to try to preserve this character and develop it as a bonsai. The challenge was there were a lot of branches that crossed each other. There were a lot of foliage masses in the right place that came from branches that were in the wrong place. Now in the course of um, working on it, we've removed at least four five major branches here 
and quite a bit of additional foliage which has ended up in the bucket down here. And uh, what we've done is we've opened it up and we've discovered that this thing has an amazing natural beauty to it. We've managed to establish fully the visual dialogue between the two trunks by choosing this branch as an apex and by turning this area, which is already partly natural, well not necessarily natural deadwood, but deadwood produced by pruning a long, long time ago, we've augmented that by uh, doing additional pruning and after the tree recovers from shaping we'll strip the bark and we'll have a massive shari coming all the way down to here with only this part and this part alive and then on this uh, trunk here again we have some dead wood that was already here and up in here and we'll augment this by stripping the bark roughly down to here and it'll have a second shari so we found some branches in some good places. We've wired some other branches into places. And at this point, we've got a foliage structure that has a nice relationship with the trunks and with the deadwood. And more important, the various foliage masses have good visual relationships with each other. So now we'll do a slow 360 and show you a tree that, at least in my opinion, looks really good from all sides. Thank you for watching, folks.